What's going on everybody? This is Broken Games HDR and in this video I'm going to give you my impressions for Guardians of the Galaxy or Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. You know Marvel got to put everything right in front of uh, anything that they own or make. So some background before I talk about the game first, right? When this game was first revealed, right? I can't remember exactly what conference it was, but when it was first shown, I was like, this looks terrible. This looks awful. This looks trash, right? And I don't think my assessment of the first demonstration of this game was wrong. I think they marketed this game very poorly, even up until the end. I think how they showed this game to us didn't do the game any justice at all, right? I just think they did a poor job at really showing us what this game is, how it plays. They just did poor marketing and, and advertising and a poor job explaining and just demonstrating this game. So I think my assessment, like just my basic eye test initially was right about this game because I went back and looked at the trailers and I'm like, these trailers are terrible. But the recent trailers that they released did the game a little bit better justice than the uh, than the first few. Right. And that's why I personally decided to to pick up the game uh, is because I can't remember. I, I, I know GameSpot released one. IGN released one. But it was really the GameSpot trailer in which they were talking about the game mechanics and kind of explaining the game a little bit more uh, so that you can understand it and how it plays. That was the gameplay uh, video that convinced me this game doesn't look so bad. This game looks like it could be decent. Because up until that point, I was pretty much like, this game looks terrible. So it, it goes to show you trailers and how you, you know, show a game makes a big difference, right? So I am pleasantly surprised by this game. This is a this is a very good game so far. I played about four hours. I live streamed it. And people who are watching are like, wow, I, you know, they're, they're pleasantly surprised. They're entertained. They're enjoying watching it. I'm enjoying playing it. This game is much better than what most of us most of us expected because I think most people were on the fence or probably kind of down on this game. I saw some people that were excited for it, but especially coming off of Avengers, the, the you know, the catastrophe that that game is, even though some people are fan of Avengers, this game goes kind of goes the opposite route of avengers whereas avengers tried to be large in scope large in scale have all these characters that you can control right but guardians goes the opposite route in which it understands okay let's not do too much let's focus on one character and just give him control of his team so we can focus on everything else in the game like the level design uh, like the dialogue, the story, um, all those other things. And I think it works out very well. Like, let's make this, a, you know, a, a narrative story, you know, driven game with gr a great script, uh, good dialogue. Let's focus on on that instead of making it a live service game. And that was the right choice, because like I said, this is a very good game. First of all, I guess, touching on the story aspect, um, you know, most of us, if you're a Marvel fan, you know the general story of the Guardians of the Galaxies, uh, you know, Peter Quill is Star-Lord, how he becomes Star-Lord and all that stuff, right? The dialogue in this game is amazing. I, I could not believe the amount of, like, dialogue and voice lines they created, especially for situational instances, right? There's so much, like, banter and real synergy and, and chemistry between the Guardians. Cause you know, that's that's their relationship. They kind of roast each other. They get on each other's nerves. You know, that's that's their relationship. We've seen that in the comics, in the, in, in the film. And I gotta say, they capture that more in this game than they do in, in the MCU films. And even in, you know, I've, I've, I've seen the Guardians in, in some um, animated uh, animated movies and animated shows and everything like that. And I, I gotta say, this is probably the best depiction of them. This game has branching dialogue uh, and choices that actually affect the story, right? Depending on the answers that you choose in these, you know, in these story situations, it actually affects the game 
and changes what ends up happening um, during the segment. So it, ha I was surprised because this game, I'm like, yo, this game has some real RPG elements. I can say with happiness, with pleasure, probably the worst thing about this game so far is that Star-Lord looks like a douchebag frat boy, which we already knew. So if that's the worst thing about this game so far, hey, we, we got something good going here, right? Um, the only the, the voice acting is is great. The only thing I would say is is Gamora's uh, voice a, voice acting seems a little bit immature and like angsty teenage girl. Where I guess I expected Gamora's demeanor uh, to come off more mature, dark assassin um, with an edge, you know. She, but she's giving me sassy teenage girl. Uh, you know, Rocket is is definitely Rocket. I feel like in the MCU, they made Drax too much of a comic relief. He was too much of a jokester, jokester, almost like a brain dead idiot. In this game, I feel like they they balance that well. Like he's funny in this game, but he's not doesn't seem like he's trying to be funny. It's not forced. I feel like in the MCU movies, those that was very forced. And one of the reasons they can like establish the relationship in this game more than they are uh, between the Guardians. Uh, than the movie is because the movie's two hours long. This game is, I don't mean, I, I think this game is at least 15 hours long. I think something around that, right? So yeah, I, I like the balance of, of, of Drax being like kind of, he's, he's definitely serious because he's oblivious to uh, certain um, human cues uh, and he's not like forcing it or trying to be funny. He's just like very dry and serious and uh, you know, he's funny you know, as a byproduct, right? So the the whole, they got the whole cast right. Getting into the gameplay a little bit, I gotta say, I'm really impressed by the pacing of this game, right? Going into it, I expected them to kind of establish the story at the beginning, and then after that, it was just gonna be nonstop combat segments, but it's not like that. They, you know, kind of pace it and, and, and space out the combat segments well and mix it up uh, with a variety of, of different gameplay segments and then story elements, right? Uh, this game pretty much plays, uh, you know, like those RPGs in which you have your main character and you have your crew and you can switch to your crew and, uh, and, and um, you know, perform certain actions uh, from everybody. It's like that, except you can't control everybody. You can only control Star-Lord directly and you issue commands to the rest of the Guardians. And when I initially heard about that, I was like, that sucks. That's trash. I want to control everybody, right? I want to be able to control everybody in the Guardians, but also give everybody commands if I wanted to do that, right? So I, I even though I do think that would have been great as well, this is still fun. It's It still works, right? I'm not necessarily thinking about the fact that I can't switch to the Guardians because, you know, the it, the combat system that they develop works. Once again, I do think it would have been, it would have been better if you can do both, but this is satisfactory. Um, you can unlock abilities, of course, uh, perks. There's different outfits to unlock. Um, there's, I don't want to call them puzzles. There's obstacles in this game um, outside of battles in which you pretty much have to use the Guardian's abilities uh, to overcome those obstacles. For example, Groot, you, if, you, if there's a gap or a chasm and you need to get across to the other side of the platform, uh, you can tell Groot to like, uh, grow a, a wooden bridge uh, if there's a heavy object you need to move of course J Drax has super strength so you tell Drax to uh, to move the object where you want um, Rocket is obviously a genius uh, you know so you can tell him to hack some hack a panel or something like that so it, it, it the game utilizes their abilities well inside battle and outside of battle with I guess these environmental obstacles Exploration is really encouraged in this game, but it, it's it's so fascinating the way they do it, right? So I'll give you an example. If you go off the beaten path because you see an object, the characters will roast you for it. Literally roast you for it. For example, I think at the, at the beginning of the game, right? Um, Rocket said that the, that's a dead end, right? But of course, you know, the gamer in me, we still go off the beaten path and explore uh you know, the, you know, explore somewhere other than where the game is telling us to go. So I go and explore it, and pretty much Rocket says, I told you there's nothing over there, you asshole. Or, you know, he, they don't necessarily curse, but Rocket has his certain 
words that they use um, in, in this universe to kind of like tell you off, curse you, curse you out. And there's so many situations like that where they will literally make fun of you for exploring. So it, it, it's this kind of reverse way of, of encouraging you to explore, but you get to experience the funny dialogue. And I can say this, this game is actually funny. There's not a lot of games that make me, there's a lot of games that, that I've played that try to make you laugh, but don't actually do it. This game actually makes me laugh and it's not cringe. So I love that, you know, there's there's reason to explore, right? Because I don't, there's not, they're not necessarily, I guess you can almost consider them like like side, objective, side objectives. Um, there's things that you will miss um, if you don't go off the beaten path. So you definitely want to explore. And once again, the guardians uh, will have dialogue for if you do decide that and they'll make fun of you for it, they'll roast you for it. And uh, it, it's it's really a pleasure pleasure to hear. Um, I was surprised that Star Lord feels a little bit weighty. I I, I don't know. I guess I expected him to feel kind of light on his feet. Some people express that they feel like the game is a little bit stiff. I definitely felt like that at first. It's like he's he's weighty but agile, right? There's fluid movement animations, and you kind of get used to it um, a, after a while, right? Uh, I I don't know. I guess I expected him to be very light and floaty, but he's not floaty at all. Um, the enemy variety, like I said, I'm only four hours in, so it's the enemy variety isn't necessarily there yet. I've mainly been fighting, I guess, blobs, kind of the stuff you've seen in, seen in the trailer, blobs and 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 weird looking aliens, a few a few monsters. So the enemy enemy variety, I feel like I'm still in the, I feel like they're kind of still throwing tutorial enemies at me. But I think I'm kind of getting out of that that part of the game now where they're going to throw like some serious enemies and, and you know, uh, more of a variety at me. Um, and one of the things about this game is visually from somebody who's just watching, which is one of the reasons why, like the, I, I said, the first few trailers of this game didn't do it justice. Just watching, it's very hard to tell what's happening, right? If you haven't played the game, it's hard to tell what's what exactly is happening even though the game tells you what's happening for example right one of Groot's uh moves that you can tell him to do i think it's called entangle i can't remember the exact name of it and he'll pretty much grab up a whole bunch of enemies um and bunch them up together so you can attack right and then you could for example uh tell tell rocket to throw a grenade once Groot has bunched all these enemies together but visually, it's kind of hard to see that or know that it's happening if you haven't played the game to understand that, right? When you're just looking at the game before playing it, it kind of just looks like a random bunch of shit is happening on screen. You can't really tell, right? So that's one of the reasons why this game didn't necessarily uh, display or demonstrate well, because you can't really tell what the hell is going on. But once you play it, you get it. Um, and I gotta say, like, this game has some set pieces in there that I, I was like, and not that, not that Uncharted was the first game to, like, do set pieces, so I hate to, like, just give, like, every time a game has set pieces, I hate to be like, oh, yeah, it's influenced by Uncharted, but, you know, this game is definitely influenced by some games that have had, you know, these elaborate set pieces in them, so, uh, they, and they, they execute those, uh, ver they execute those very well. And the combat is not just surface level. It's not just like, oh, you shoot enemies, you know, pew, pew, pew until they're dead. Um, Star-Lord has elemental, he has elements, uh, elemental effects in his shots that you unlock. Um, enemies have shields. Uh, s you have to stagger enemies um, to actually be able to deal higher damage because if you don't stagger certain enemies, then it'll do like next to no damage. So there's some there's some depth to that gameplay. Also, like there's situational things like um, I think what did I I think I destroyed a, a rock or destroyed part of an enemy, and then I was able to tell uh, Drax to pick up the pick up whatever they dropped and throw it back at them. Things like that. It's very situational things depending on uh, what happens when you're when you're when you're in combat. And they have this this huddle mechanic. It, it, it's 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 kind of it's kind of it's kind of ass honestly it's, it's kind of trash it's it's like uh in the middle of a battle this whole um i guess scene happens in which 
you're what you're trying to like if you're losing the battle uh if things are not going your way it, it's kind of like it's kind of like call, uh, calling a timeout during the game and then uh you if you choose the right thing to say during the during this segment then your team will get their health back they might get a damage boost but it, it's kind of corny because it takes you it literally takes you completely out of the battle it, it's like it's literally like a timeout right right in the middle of battle so it's a it's a little bit weird um the game looks good um i'm playing it on ps5 only because when i tried to live stream it i have it on pc also i'm probably gonna get a refund um on pc for some reason when i use uh when i try to live stream with obs the game frame rate just buckles and i don't and i'm not sure why because i have played more demanding games than guardians and when I use OBS with it, it's fine. So I had to play it on PS5, get the refund on PC. Uh, there's a and on PS5. There's a performance mode and a fidelity mode. Uh, there there are some in instances, some strange instances in in which you experience some frame drops, some stuttering, and it's not even really been in combat, right? It, so it, I think it's just they just need to release a patch. For example, uh, there's this part of the game when you're on the ship. Uh, in because which is kind of like a, a hub, I guess. Uh, when you're in the ship and you go to Star Lord's room, because you can go into everybody's room, um, and there's some dialogue choices in there depending on the th certain things you find out in the world. And for some reason, this small little I don't know eight by ten room Star Lord has uh, the frame rate drops in there. I'm like, there's literally nothing going on in this room. There's not a lot. There's no enemies or anything. It's just eight by ten room. There's nothing going on. It's just him and his room and like the frame rate drops to like 20 or something so there's some random things like that uh there's also a streaming mode which i love um a few few games have had this such as uh quantum break has had this in which if you turn on streaming mode in the audio settings they will remove all copyright music from the game not all the music they play in this in this in this game is copyright so that doesn't mean you won't get any music at all it just means that they will remove all the copyright music so you won't get any copyright strikes uh, or copyright matches if you're streaming the game, which I love. I say every game should have that feature. Every game. Any game that doesn't have that feature, you need to get on it. To me, like especially for you know people who stream games like me, that it's very important. Because it, it sucks if you stream a game and then you get a copyright match, you gotta and YouTube, you know, YouTube system YouTube system to fight copyright strikes and matches suck. So we don't want to go through that. So I'm very happy this game has that. And I know music is a huge part of Guardians um, and everything like that. It's ingrained in, in, into the into what Guardians of the Galaxy is. I'm not the big... And the music is good. The copyright, the, the non-copyright stuff, I'm like, yo, this is kind of banging, right? So the music is good. I'm sure the copyright stuff is even... Is, the music is even better. Um, but music isn't necessarily the most important thing to me in gaming. So I'm completely fine with that. Uh, so yeah, man, I, I am, like I said, I am shocked, I am surprised at how good this game actually is, uh, compared to what I was expecting, and at least initially when they first showed it. It is, it is a, it's much better than what, than what I expected. As far as is it worth it, people always ask me, is it worth it? I can't tell you if something is worth it, right? I can only tell you if it's worth it to me. I can't tell you if it's worth it to you. To me, this this game so far is worth it to me. Like I, I but but once again, it, it's it's that's something that's very subjective, very personal. Most games, listen, as as, as long as I'm enjoying it, I I'm not really somebody who's a stickler for how much I I paid I pay for a game. You get me? It's because it's it's very it's very case by case as far as far as who you are. So I can't really say it, but I but. So far, paying $60 for this game, I have no issue with that. That's that's all I can say. So let me know what y'all think about this, man. Um, maybe if I have time, I'll hold the spaces um, to get people's thoughts on, on Guardians and other people's impressions because I think a lot of people are pre presently surprised. Like, the pendulum has moved significantly uh, for this game um, versus what it was before. A lot of people were on the fence. A lot of people were skeptical. Now people have played it are spreading are spreading the word about this game and everybody uh see seemingly really likes it so uh let me know what y'all think hit the like button um hit the notification bell so you can know anytime i upload 
or uh, live stream, which I will be live streaming this game again later today. Uh, and uh, follow me on Twitter. And uh, I'll catch y'all on the next video. I'm out of here. Peace. Oh, that's just the name. Uh, dead end. That's just great. Wait, is that Chitauri Tech over there? Ask the Chitauri. No, no, it is. It's a retractable bridge. They used them at the prison I was in. Too bad the controls are on the other side of the giant chasm. We what do you do not have time to dawdle in this jungle. I shall hurl the creature over the chasm so he may activate the bridge. I may activate a hole through your face. Put me down. <laughs> It'll be fine. Just curl up in a ball. What? Drax, throw him. No. Very well. Peter. It's ah! okay. He'll land on his feet. Uh, I guess that only applies to cats. You sons of dogs! Scut-busting ass! I am not familiar with these words. Filthy grunt scum, but I think he's making them up. Blocks. He's really pissed. You can rot, you free bag and flarkle! At least he's not shooting at us. He missed on purpose, right? Order the beast to do its job. Rock it! Come on, man! Cram it, dashed face! Fix the bridge and we'll raise your cut by 5%. I want ten. Okay, deal. We'll take it out of group.